Hello and welcome to another episode of Throttle Stop Garage. Okay, in this episode of Throttle Stop Garage, we're going to have a look at the process of getting some custom sheet metal made in order to make carbon fiber parts. Okay, so as we've got moving on the project, uh, just over my shoulder behind me here, I'm having a look at the nose cone area of my car. So I've dropped the fenders on the car, the front edge of the fender, I've dropped one inch, so 25 millimeters. So I have to add that uh, to the nose piece in order to have all of the, uh, the parts of the front end of the car fit together. And in order to do that, we're going to have to make some custom parts. So this whole grill section of the car is going to have to grow by that 25 millimeters. So in this video, we'll have a look at the process of getting that done. It's always at the start of these projects when you find out that that bar that you put on your frame in order to lift the piece in prevents you from putting the nose cone on your car. Okay, so there's the nose panel going in. I've got to give it a little bit of a trim here and there to pass the new frame horns and in order to get things in. And uh, I, I, I was watching this video and noticing that the 2x2 two two I was using to hold that hood up was getting a little bit close to falling off. All right, fenders come back out of the rafters and out of the bags and uh, just pushed onto the car real quick. Uh, and then I noticed a few things aren't fitting right. So out comes the measurements and I'm like, gee, that passenger side front corner. So the left side as we face the car is just not, it's not fitting properly. There's something really wrong here. Um, this front nose cone section has been in at least one collision. So that's a real problem. So we better start getting going, right? So um, I'm going to start with some metal patterns. really don't know any other way to do this. Uh, so I'm cutting 20 mil wide pieces of 20 gauge steel. And then with my shrinker stretcher uh, little machine there, I'm going ahead and I'm going to create a template, um, uh, just a basic guide in order to catch the shape. So I'm just comparing, in this case, the front of the nose panel to the hood. Now, the hood's a done deal, so it has to match the hood. So I've gone in and done that. And then uh, my friend Matt actually has a car that has a front nose section that hasn't been crushed. So we took a pattern, or he made a wooden pattern for me. Uh, and then I'm making a steel replicate of that pattern because it'll be a lot easier to use when I'm forming the front of that car when I'm doing the steel work here. So I've got these templates now made up and we're getting ready. The old spot welder comes out. Boy, is ever handy for doing this kind of template work where I'm just putting some stops in and, and getting that formed around. Uh, and then I have to start the process. And one thing I noticed was that that front nose section, she just wouldn't fit. So I set it up against my bench and got a two by six and just leaned on it and bent it back into the right shape. Okay, so from the little bit of work that I did yesterday, uh, just getting the front nose piece bent in and around, uh, the fit actually came out perfect. So it wasn't gonna fit at all before. The headlight rings weren't gonna fit. And it was all because the angle up here around the uh, light surround was completely wrong. Uh, this front nose section has been hit on the car a couple of times, so uh, it's been bent around into various shapes, none of which are going to be good enough to get a uh, carbon fiber part made from Our them. Our task for today is to uh, A, see if we can fix some of the dents, uh, some of the distortion, I should say, up here at the top line with the hood, and then get this part cut and get our one inch drop put into it. All right, let's get to work. All right, so here's just a quick pan over the top edge. So you can see it, it fits really nicely on the driver's side, but as we pan over to the passenger side, the left-hand side panel here, you can see that we're off probably three, four mils. Uh, and that's with the, the headlight ring and everything in the right place. So that, it's just a result of it getting hammered around and probably wasn't very accurately made at the start. So with the carbon fiber panels, we know we're not going to move those after they're made. So you have to get out of the sort of steel mindset that we can always hit it with a little Bondo or whack it with a hammer. That's just not going to happen uh, with these kinds of parts. So they have to be perfect when the mold is made. All right, so uh, again, get brave. Get the grinder out and I'm going to start chopping these pieces up. Now I'm not going to do it exactly the same way. Couldn't figure out how to hold it. So uh, duct tape, handyman secret weapon, always works. Uh, so I'm now uh, just about finished sectioning the panel all the way through. On the finished car, it's only going to be the one, uh, the one panel thick. I haven't figured the rest out yet, but... Uh, I then get um, just a quick tip for those that are interested. I, I do have my local sheet metal supply folk uh, 
uh, they do occasionally, uh, at my request, cut me off some uh, pieces of 20 gauge in this case, and then they bend them in their big press break. Uh, it's far better than anything I can do in my garage, and it's so cheap. Like, they only charge me a few dollars to do each one. It's pretty ridiculous. But, uh, right, so now I'm using my shrinker and stretcher to get this shape just right. Like, it's got a subtle curve to it all the way along. I'm adding that 25 millimeters to it as I go. Uh, as I'm just using the shrink dies, by the way, and then when I find that I've overdone it a little bit and I've overshrunk, then I'm using my railway a rail dolly that I made in order to just gently tap that area back and stretch it back out. I find that I can do that really accurately and get these shapes to just come in right where I want them. Uh, so it was uh, 50 mil to start with. I need 25 mil, so I'll set it up and then cut it off. Uh, by the way, for those guys that are still using grinders to cut sheet metal, go get yourself one of these Beverly Shear copy knockoff things. That thing is just, it's brilliant for cutting sheet metal. No grinding, no sparks, no, yeah, it's fine. Okay, so now I'm just doing a little, anyways, more roughing in work. Uh, just trying to get this right. Uh, just doing the little bends around and then uh, getting the, the, in this case, the primer knocked off the part and back in to try to get the uh, the piece tacked on. So there's no need to uh, to fully weld the part in, but I do like my lines to be nice and tight. Uh, if anything, it's just for practice, right? Like you could make it sloppy. We're gonna get Bondo all over this, but uh, why not make the sheet metal nice and, and you'll have a whole lot less work to do. Keep practicing techniques, I do it all the time. Uh, skill development's important. So laying the tacks in again, if I set it uh, face down on the bench, then the bench works as a giant heat sink and it makes the welding a lot easier. Uh, it never sticks. I've never had that as a problem. Uh, anyway, so on we go. We've got it all uh, tacked in here. Then the side parts, now that it's fully tacked and, and everything's pretty much done, the side pieces have to go back in to locate the headlights. So the headlight location doesn't change. So we're dropping just the the aperture parts, the openings. The headlights aren't going to move, so they have to go back in roughly where they go back in. Uh, so they have to be in the same spot they were before, or as close as you can get them. So I've got uh, a couple of different methods here to try to keep things straight and square and organized. But I know I've added 25 mil everywhere, so it should be okay. Oh, little little advertising for Soup Classic Motoring. Uh, go and watch my buddy George's channel. You'll you'll enjoy his work. Um, it's far more advanced on the camera work than anything I could possibly pull off. Right, so I'm now adding that 25 mil, putting in my little slivery pieces here. Again, uh, it's almost like sheet metal showing off. I mean, this gets really skinny, really narrow, really tough to do. It's got a lot of shape, actually. These aren't flat panels. They're very shapely things. So even as I'm putting in the, the template there I made with tape, um, I find that I have to adjust the line and I do that just with the grinder. Real carefully just skinning just on the edge just so it fits in perfectly. Like if I could render this in steel, no problem at all um, when, it, when it's done. Like I could finish weld this up and you'd barely need a skim of Bondo to have it be uh, right where you want it. So uh, always always good to get that practice in. All right, so this is the first test fit onto the car. Uh, I I was going to count how many times it went on and off, but a lot. <laughs> and then if the shape wasn't quite right, uh, that's why I've got that great big deep stretcher and shrinker. Uh, it's easy to get the panel in there and uh, do whatever little work I need to do. Just little bits of dolly work here and there. Make sure that, uh, again, I want that shape to be as close as possible because I want the Bondo phase to be as painless as possible. Um, and when I start doing that, again, it's uh, it's not fun work, but you really find out how inaccurate that panel was at the start. So the fenders, I, I double check those, they're fine. Uh, but even side to side, there were differences. Uh, one of the big problems was just getting the panel in. It was just held in with old sheet metal screws. That's the way it came from the factory. So even though I'm only temporarily attaching it, I, I put in some uh, some riv nuts here. So I installed rib nuts on either side, and then the location of the panel is just more accurate with the rib nut. Uh, so in it goes. And then uh, this this side was slightly problematic. Remember when I made the fenders, I wasn't 100% sure where the fender return to that panel would go. Um, okay, I should have maybe fitted up first when I did that, but 
I only missed it by a little bit. So uh, I did have to fill that gap uh, that's between the two panels, between the fender and that nose cone panel. I did fill the gap there. Uh, so in essence, don't ask me if you can, you know, have one of these panels because these panels only fit this car. <laughs> it's like, unless you have my fenders, your nose cone isn't going to fit or it'll be, you know, a couple of millimeters. You can see it there on the, the, the right hand side. It's off a couple of mil at the top. And on this side, it's like a mil or so at the bottom. It's pretty close. It's probably as close as those things ever were in the factory. Uh, right, so I'm laying on the, the fiberglass reinforced, uh, the kitty hair product here. Uh, it's uh, big and gloopy and there's no need. I should have just done it with lightweight, but it's strong, uh, whatever. I didn't see, I have some, so I used it. So there's no reason to do it. Now the shut panel, I wanted a little extra flange. There is no flange on the back edge. So I added a 20 mil flange to the back edge of what was already there. And that'll give me options when the panel is done to close in the area around the radiator. It'll give me something to bolt to uh, future parts that I'm not too sure what I'm doing with. Um, right, so I've gone in. I'm now roughing all the panels in. So that headlight area on the right side of the panel wasn't right. So I just filled it in with the kitty hair. And then I come back in and just grind and reshape that off. Anyway, there was lots of work. This was... Uh, this was two weeks worth of evenings and, and a weekend to get the Bondo right. But when I get the Bondo right, I mean, this Bondo is, it's perfect. Like I was, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm a little anal, but uh, I want this stuff to be just dead nuts. And again, it's, it's cold in the garage. Uh, I'm not out there for any more than an hour every once in a while. Uh, to, I mean, every day I'm out there for an hour, but you know, how much work do you get done? Well, not as much as you think. Uh, so... Uh, a couple of good uh, good solid runs at it here. When I'm shaping the Bondo, by the way, for folk that haven't got a lot of experience with it, um, don't play around. Like you could be there the rest of your life, but you can watch even in the in the the the, the, the time lapse video as I am hammering away on it. That's with 40 grit sandpaper. So we're not being gentle with this at all. I'm shaping at this point. I'm trying to get it flat. You can't get a panel flat if you're going to sand it with 120 grit sandpaper and you'll be there for your whole life. You also can't get it flat with a DA. Uh, not really. So I, I hit it with the, uh, and, and it's flexing and all the rest of this stuff. So I'm pretty gentle with it, but the 40 grit takes care of it pretty fast. And then I'm going to fill in the light scratches or the deep scratches actually that are left by the 40 grit. So no problem with getting that in as a technique so then you fill in the scratches later you don't try to make your first coat perfect you just try to get it knocked down and try to get the areas flat uh, now it does turn out that most of this isn't actually flat and even the area in there along the bottom of the fender right from the factory it's got a negative return angle it's that's not going to help the bumper sits up there so i wanted it nice and flat uh, so i could get it out of the mold so even the bottom of the car, you have to pay attention to every detail. There's no fixing it later. Uh, there's only fixing it before you make the mold. So this is sort of your philosophy for uh, doing this kind of work. Then on the nose cone section, I spent a lot of time getting that shape dialed in with that steel pattern. So, uh, you know, you go out and you figure out when, where you need it a little bit more. Uh, you know, again, where the, the, the denting and the collision damage is... Uh, ruined the shape. I wanted to get that shape back to pretty much perfect. Um, then my only other real advice on this kind of stuff is you see me just blowing on a little coat of uh, black paint that I use as a guide coat pretty frequently with this stuff uh, so I can see what I'm doing is leave all your edges 90 degrees. Leave all your edges sharp when you're doing your, your body work uh, bondo phase and then round them at the end. Don't try to round them as you're going. Leave them sharp then you can actually plot your lines and you know that everything is going to flow uh, together and you're not going to be fooling yourself with curves. Right? So it's really, it's, it's harder than it looks. This panel has actually got a ton of shape in it. Uh, and to get it right, it did take me quite a long time.
as with everything, all the work is in the prep. There's almost no work that goes on in the paint. Uh, so what am I doing here? I'm simply blowing over the entire part with some 2K uh, urethane high build primer uh, that I just had lying in my paint cabinet. So it, it didn't take a whole lot of it. I a couple of gun loads and it was done. So I just blow on a real easy first coat uh, on it. It wasn't a heavy coat or anything because you're not going to be able to pick up every little flaw when you're working just in the bondo. So this just gives me a consistent surface to look at. Uh, I fix up the last little bits that need fixing up to get it 100% and then uh, blow on two coats of the high build and let it completely dry and now we have a finished part that we can go ahead and uh, create the molds from. So we now got the front nose cone section uh, plugs made. So that's just the sheet metal part that's eventually going to get turned into the mold. And uh, in the next episode, we'll have a look at getting the molds done. We're going to be using some new molding practices. So if you've seen my previous mold video, we're going to go that little step further and uh, do some a little bit more advanced techniques uh, in terms of making the mold. Some of this stuff I've never tried before. So I've got some new materials and other uh, tricks up my sleeve to try. So uh, thanks again, and we'll catch you on the next episode.